Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Nice to see you back. And Shivratri is around the corner. So many of you had requested me to make a video on Shivratri. So finally, it's here. All right. So today we will discuss what should we do during Shivratri. And there are many things, of course, we can't discuss everything here. And one of the most crucial things that we do uh, when we go to any temple is we take darshan, of course, which is very good. And we also pray. But there's a system how that should be done. There is a procedure, actually. Okay. And this procedure is not to bind anybody in some rules or regulations or some restrictions. Okay, it is to uh, it is for us to come in the right consciousness. Actually, all right. So it is for our own benefit. It is not that we have to follow certain rules and regulations. Okay. So therefore, today we shall discuss uh, what we should be doing in Shivratri and when we go to any temple in general all right therefore if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me then you can go to my website down in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him okay so the first thing that we do when we go to a temple is we we start praying directly to the dt that is not recommended why because the dt is not we cannot approach the dt directly okay so the first thing that we should do when we go to any temple is we should first remember our diksha guru or our shik shiksha guru okay shiksha guru is the one who gives you knowledge spiritual knowledge there can be unlimited number of shiksha gurus and Diksha Guru is that one Guru who gives you the mantra and the mala. Okay, he gives you Diksha. Okay, and therefore, through the Gurus, we have a connection to the Parampara. So, therefore, the first thing that we should do when we go to any temple or during this Shivratri is we should pray to our Shiksha Gurus and to our Diksha Guru that please connect me to the parampara they are they they are like the connection that we have it's like a, a visa which you get when you go to a different country okay so if you don't have the visa you can't stay there so that they are they are like the connection to the divine right without them we cannot get connected that is not possible so therefore we first go and pray to our shiksha guru and our diksha guru before we enter the temple okay we should not enter the temple without their permission okay or i mean of course now we cannot call them and ask you know can we enter please but at least we should seek their blessings all right and then we should this is very important we should not directly enter the temple we should always pray to some great devotee of that deity okay so for example when it comes to lord shiva uh, if you go to a shiva temple and you just directly pray to shiva no no that's not the etiquette actually that's that can be uh, that can be sometimes arrogance also no i will directly be connected to shiva right so for for example in case of lord shiva we always see that the murti of nandi maharaj is there he is one of lord shiva's great devotees like so many other other devotees like so therefore uh, we must pray to nandi maharaj first right and you can always see for the westerners who are not aware of who is nandi he is one of the very close associates of lord shiva and nandi is always there in front of the deity of lord shiva he is there as a bull so if you go in front you can always see that uh, directly opposite of Shiva, Nandi is staying. And uh, what Nandi is doing exactly? He's many times people say that Nandi Maharaj is waiting for Lord Shiva to come out and give him darshan. No, that is not what Nandi is doing. <laughs> Nandi is not uh, like a businessman who says, "Oh, I will stay here, but you must come and give your darshan to me." No, he he is. He's a 
very pure soul. So he's just waiting there. He's not waiting to get something. He's just waiting. He's not thinking, oh, tomorrow Lord Shiva will come out. Even if he does not come out for eternity, which happens sometimes when Lord Shiva goes to meditation, years and years and years, thousands and thousands of celestial years pass by, but he doesn't come out, right? So, therefore, our attitude when we go to any Shiva temple should be like Nandi, always 1000%. Yes? So, now, Nandi is not waiting that uh, Lord Shiva will come out and give me some special blessings, all right? No, that is not Nandi's objective. Nandi is just waiting. Just He's just waiting there. He has no objective. He has no agenda there. Yes, one day Lord Shiva will come out and give me darshan. No, even that is not his agenda. His agenda is, I am waiting here. Whenever Lord Shiva wants anything, if he calls me, I will just go. If he doesn't call me, that's fine. I will stand. I will just sit here. I will stand here. All right. So that is called selflessness. Okay. So we should also have that attitude because many times uh, these festivals like Shivaratri or Janmashtami or Ram Nami comes and we just go to the temple and we hit the, the ghanti and we come out. Okay. And we give some donation and we take some prasad and okay, bye, 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 bye. that's it. <laughs> no, that is not how we should use these festivals. These festivals are very special days where we can reconnect with our ultimate source, okay, source energy. <clears throat> so therefore, next time or this time when you visit uh, a Shiva temple during Shivratri, we must visit in the mood of Nandi, okay. So we pray to Nandi Maharaj that please give, please bless me also with the consciousness that you have. Otherwise, we will just go there like an arrogant person and say salute to Lord Shiva and come back. No, that is not how it should be done actually. And when we pray to Nandi, we should especially pray to him that we can also get the level of devotion that he has for Lord Shiva, at least during that time at least within those one or two minutes at least so when we pray you will you will see that uh, you will see a drastic change in your consciousness this always happens whenever i have gone to a shiva temple whenever i have prayed to nandi he he instantly blesses you <laughs> i don't know how how he does it but i have seen it instantly my consciousness just changes okay and then when then you should also remember uh, the shloka which Lord Krishna says in the Gita. Tad vidhi pranipate na pari prasne na sevaya vadek chanti te gyanam gyani na stattva darshinaha. So one should render service and inquire humbly. Right? So it is very crucial that we also do some service to Nandi Maharaj. We should not just uh, just pray to him and bypass him. You know, if, if we can offer something to him also, that is great. But if, if if there is no arrangement to offer anything to him, it's fine. We can move ahead. And then uh, when we go ahead and uh, see the Shivlinga or either we see Lord Shiva's deity there, okay, either of the two, then yes, we should directly pray to Lord Shiva. No, no, no. <laughs> we should not do that. The next step, step is we should pray to his consort, his eternal consort, which is Goddess Durga, who is Mother Parvati herself. Okay, because the word Durga, there are meaning, many meanings of this word Durga. One of the meanings of this word is Durgati Nashini, which means the remover of Durgati, which means inauspiciousness. Okay. Gati is destination. Dur means bad destination. So that's like inauspiciousness. So she is the remover of inauspiciousness and she bestows auspiciousness. Okay. So therefore, we should pray to Goddess Ruga. And if we can uh, if we can contemplate on the nine forms of Goddess Ruga, you know, starting from Brahmacharini and then like that, you, know, you can keep going, Shalya Putri, then Mahagauri. So if we can contemplate on the nine forms of Goddess Duga and 
if we can contemplate the each of the stories related to these forms of goddess durga when when she did what you know she had uh, she had liberated this world from so many demons you know mahishasur and chand and moon there were so many like this okay so if we can contemplate on her stories and we can pray to her because she because see she's like the mother actually okay so so generally they say the mother is more merciful than the father okay because she's more compassionate than the father so lord shiva will not accept you or me or anybody directly <laughs> lord shiva will only accept those who parvati recommends to him yes why 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 should lord shiva accept us i mean look at our habits look at our mind what, what are the things that we think of you know? do, do you know what lord shiva did when he saw kamdev he opened his third eye and he directly burned him so if somebody can claim that he or she is free from sex desire or any materialistic desire then lord shiva accepts us okay but without that lord shiva doesn't accept us okay and that is not his arrogance it is just a lack of our inner purity okay so therefore we should pray to nandi maharaj that please request mother parvati that she accepts me okay and the divine mother will always accept you because she she is a mother after all right and then when you you can also uh, chant some stotram for goddess durga that you can chant okay, there are many stotrams you know ai giri nandini there is one stotram uh, you can find it in youtube it has around 10 20 million views one or two videos it's very nice that you can recite okay and then finally when you and you should take permission for from mother parvati to and to take darshan of lord shiva because you are actually entering her home okay and she is the boss there <laughs> so unless she permits then you cannot enter you cannot enter kailash or shivaloka unless she permits so she must 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 permit you she must recommend you to lord shiva otherwise it doesn't work like that all right so when you pray to the divine mother then she will tell lord shiva that this person is very nice <laughs> please accept this person okay and because devi parvati is saying that you are nice and she is the divine mother she will only see the good in you you may do 1 million uh, bad things terrible things but if you do one small thing which is good she will only take that because she is the divine mother she only sees the good she doesn't see bad so she will recommend you to lord shiva okay and then lord shiva will accept you that is the proper procedure not that just whimsically we go and oh om namah shivaya we do like this no it doesn't work like that you just uh, is just that you are doing things whimsically that is not the scriptural process of how to take darshan and then when you uh, when you take uh, the blessings of goddess durga mother parvati and then when you go in front of lord shiva's deity or the shivlinga now if it is a shivlinga then uh, this process will not apply you can directly take darshan of the shivling but suppose the deity of shiva is there or shiva and parvati okay sometimes the deity is there the murti so what should you do that time in that time you should not see lord shiva's face directly no 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 that is not how you should take darshan darshan should start from the feet the lotus feet because uh, lord shiva or vishnu their feet is compared to lotus because lotus is very beautiful so there uh, you can see they always compare you know like uh, lord vishnu's face is considered to be like lotus his eyes you know so so similarly for lord shiva also his feet is considered to be like lotus so therefore you should take darshan of his lotus feet first of all okay and then you should pray to him that i am utterly unqualified i do not deserve to get your darshan okay but it is because of the greatness of my gurus and it is because of the greatness of nandi maharaj and it is because of 
goddess durga mother parvati that i have somehow become eligible to get your darshan although i i i don't have any qualification personally you know i, I am plagued with uh, the six anarthas inside you know lust greed anger envy pride illusion you know, kama krodha lobha moha matsare so uh, so therefore i am not qualified to see you, you know, i am nobody i even even if i do tapasya for 1 million or billions and trillions of lifetimes i will never 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 be qualified to see you but because of these great personalities like my gurus and nandi maharaj and your consort goddess durga i have also become eligible now they have made me eligible because by their blessings okay so because of them i have got the chance to come here and get your darshan okay so you should first see his lotus feet and then you should offer this prayer then you then then lord shiva is very pleased because he knows that then then he he will feel that oh yeah yeah this person is not qualified but because he is so humble and he is admitting that he has come here through the parampara okay that is why i will accept him yes and then gradually you should start looking upwards okay you should look at his thighs then his uh, hips then his chest and then you should look at his this point you know, the neck because this part is blue or it's black or it's very dark why because we all know he had now uh, drank the poison during this uh, sagar manthan leela which happened all right and then we should finally take darshan of his face and then the snake which is there around his neck and then the the moon which is also there okay that is why he is known as chandra bhushan chandra shekhar i mean sorry so and then we should also see uh, mother ganga who is who is there in his uh, in his jata okay in his hairs because he had accepted the prayer of one of the ancestors of lord ram who is none other than the great bhagirath and he had uh, he had he he was the one who was holding mother ganga on his head and then from his head the ganga comes out okay so therefore when when we see lord shiva's face finally then the next thing that we should do is we should appreciate him and we should appreciate the things that he has done okay so that day you can read some uh, past times from the shiva puran and you can also uh, contemplate on the 12 jyoti lingas okay or any prominent shiva temple there are many of course not only 12 so you can read and you can you can try to express your gratitude to lord shiva for the things that he has done for the fallen conditioned living entities of kaliyuga especially and especially he drank the poison during sagar mantran so that is i mean i mean imagine the level of compassion that a person can have that to protect the entire universe you you ruin your own body okay <laughs> so therefore whatever stories that we know from the shiva puran or from any other scripture not necessarily shiva puran then we should always uh, pray to him and we should express our gratitude that just say thank you thank you very much for protecting all of us if he would not be there maybe we would not be here i would not be here sitting and making this video and you would not be uh they are sitting and watching this video okay everything would be destroyed of of course you know, during that uh, sagar manthan leela so it is because of him that you are able to see this video and i am able to make this video it is all because of him it is because of him that you are able to see what should be done in shivratri all right so therefore we should express our gratitude and we should pray to lord shiva that please elevate me from the three modes of material nature you know, sattva rajatama because 
because he is the in charge of the material world right so unless he blesses you we cannot go out of the three gunas the sattva gun rajogun and tamogun okay we will eternally stay here in this material in this material world we will just rot and rot and suffer in this material world eternally if he does not bless us right so and within the three modes he is tamoguna adipati he is the controller of the mode of ignorance so therefore if we have any weakness of heart or any bad habits which are not sanctioned by the words of the scriptures and the sages therefore we should pray to him that please help me to get rid of this bad habit okay i won't name the things here it's up to you 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 know yourself you know yourself the best okay so and after we pray to him about and request him to elevate our consciousness basically okay and then if we have any materialistic prayer you know you want to get married you want kids you want money or that that you can pray anyways that will happen by your karma of course <laughs> so these are the things that you should be doing during shivratri and of course when you are going there to the temple it is uh, recommended that uh, also my guru used to say whenever you are going to the temple see in india there is a custom it's a very beautiful custom in the vedic tradition and uh, to some extent it is also there in the west i have seen it is not only there in india it is there in the other countries also that whenever we go to any person's house we never go empty handed okay we always take something in hand unless we are in a very dire scenario like uh, we are we are extremely busy or you know we are we are not having time at all so i, I have always seen my father he will wait in a traffic jam waste time parking the car he will waste 30 minutes but he will definitely get a pack of sweets for uh, going to uh, somebody's house who has invited us okay so similarly we should never 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 go to the temple and empty handed because the temple is the residing place for god the deity so it is like we are going to his house okay so uh, his or her it can be a devi temple also okay so uh, we are going to somebody's house so imagine if you never go at, at least the the traditional in traditional context if you, if you never go empty handed to anybody's house then should we go empty handed to god's house no never we should always take something okay it can be anything it can be a flower or it can be some bhoga or we can also take some you know, whatever whatever you wish you can take that okay or you can see the things which that deity likes so for lord shiva example milk or you know uh, bhel the leaf okay so these are the things which it which will depend on what kind of uh, what kind of deity the person is or what the person likes and does not all right so therefore we should take those things and we should offer okay lord shiva that is very important so that is it, it's not just that thing which you are offering actually it is our consciousness basically which we are offering okay so lord shiva does not accept that thing which you offer he accepts the purpose okay so don't think that you are offering that thing no it is not like that so when a man is offering a red rose to a, his beloved he is not actually offering that rose you know he is actually offering his love which is in form of that rose okay so therefore if we want to cultivate a personal relationship with god this is very 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 crucial guhiyam akhyati prachati and also we can share our heart we are if we are having some serious issue in our life we are struggling we can pray to him that please help me come out of this okay and therefore by that once you offer and then when you are done just don't leave there all right just don't just disappear okay that that is not good then at the end you should also thank lord shiva again that please uh, thank you very much for allowing me to take your darshan through the parampara of my gurus and nandi maharaj and uh, goddess parvati and then you should individually thank mother parvati for letting you in actually <laughs>
You know, otherwise, if she doesn't permit, you will just go like a ghost and you will roam and you will come back and sit and watch TV in the home. All right. And then you should, before leaving, you should pray to Nandi Maharaj, of course, and pray to him again that uh, the next, till the next time when I come here, please bless me that I can maintain the same consciousness, okay, which you have. I can eternally maintain that consciousness of a servant, of a das. I can always maintain that. And then when you are done, you should again pray to your gurus. You should thank them. You should express your gratitude and you should pray to them that they, they keep blessing you like this in the future also, okay, for eternity in fact. And when you are done with that, then uh, you can also do some donations to the temple or to any uh, person who is connected to uh, who is uh, involved in any kind of spiritual practices regarding that DT. You know? So uh, if, if there are some yagyas going on, you can do some donations there or you can donate some fruits or you can donate some you know, uh, this milk or you can donate uh, some bhoga which is offered to Lord Shiva. Okay, So that, that when the bhoga is offered, it becomes prasad and other people can honor it. Okay. And of course, it is highly recommended that you do not take onion and garlic that day on Shivratri. And you should also try to fast at least uh, till, till the afternoon. Okay, It is highly, highly recommended. And at least on that day, we should totally abstain from doing any nonsense, which means like eating meat or taking alcohol or doing any any kind of nefarious activities like this and yes now many people say that uh, during shivratri or oh, the, the people who take bhang lord shiva used to drink uh, poison uh, so sorry not poison used to drink bhang so why can't we drink well lord shiva has drank poison also so if you my guru used to say i had i had asked him can i drink bhang lord shiva drinks he said yes you can drink no problem provided you can also drink poison okay so I leave it to you. If you, you can try sometimes, you know, you can take some <laughs> Dettol and you can try, you know, some sips. So you, you can check how do you feel. So if you, if you feel your body is so strong and you are so uh, powerful that you can digest uh, Dettol or some, some liquid, some fancy liquid, <laughs> then you can go ahead and try Bhan. But if you feel that it's not possible, then don't pretend to be Lord Shiva, okay? He can do it, but we cannot do it because we are not Shiva. <laughs> All right. So don't justify your wrong, wrong actions in the name of Lord Shiva. Do not do that. Okay. Shiva will never be pleased if you do all this nonsense. Okay. So don't waste your time drinking all these things in the night. Okay. Even if the temple is offering, don't, don't, don't take it. It is not your business you will not be in a good state of consciousness when you take it. You know that very well. All right. That is it from my side. If you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation, you can go to the description section below. All right. So wish you a very, very happy Shivratri festival and enjoy. <laughs>